Carolina, Lindsey Graham, ranking member of the Judiciary Committee and member of the Budget Committee. Great to have you with us, Senator. Thank you very Thank much you. Uh, for being here. I, I just mentioned that, um, that this is a, a pitched battle between yeah. senators and members of Congress because they say they're not going to give in on this border piece of this yeah. if there's more money for Ukraine. Let me just play this quick soundbite from one of your colleagues, J.D. Vance. Watch this. Right now, people in Ohio can't afford food. Young people can't afford to buy homes. We're paying for their government. You're exactly right. We've got to focus on our own problems. And Laura, the thing that is in our best interest is to get the killing to stop. That's what we should be doing with American leadership, not writing more blank it's checks to endless war. So it seems, uh, especially in your party and the Republican Party, that's a growing sentiment, Senator. Mm. What, what do you say today about where we stand? Well, here's what I would say that with all due respect to, to Senator Vance, Ukraine is not losing. They've destroyed half of the Russian army, taken half the territory back from Putin. And if we keep helping them, uh, they will even do better. And if we give up on Ukraine, we'll have a wider war. The last person I want to be lectured to about Ukraine is Joe Biden. If President Biden had given Ukraine the weapons they needed early on, they would have even done better than they have today. Uh, he was slow to give them tanks, didn't want to give them F-16s, didn't want to give long-range artillery. He could have stood up to Putin before the invasion, but he was afraid to be provocative. So here's what I would say. We're not going to help Ukraine until we help ourselves. Uh, to President Biden, on your watch, the conditions for 9-11 are greater than I've ever seen since 9-11. According to your own FBI director, the threat level against America is at all-time high. He sees blinking lights everywhere. Since October the 7th, when we've been helping Israel after the barbaric attack by Hamas, all the jihadist groups in the world are urging their members to attack us here at home. The border is beyond broken. Over 9,000 a day coming across is unsustainable. The likelihood of another 9-11 grows every day. So I want to help Ukraine. I will help Ukraine. But to President Biden, your AWOL as commander in chief in protecting our border, to Senator Murphy and the people negotiating for Demo with Democrats, I'm tired of uh, your lies about where the Republicans stand. We want to secure a broken border. We're not asking for all of H.R. 2, but you're refusing to embrace the idea the border is even broken to begin with. So yeah. we'll never get a deal until the commander in chief gets involved. And I'm not going to vote to help Ukraine, Israel, or Taiwan until we secure our own border. President Biden could do this by himself if he chose to. So if we go into the holiday season because we don't have a deal, it's because President Biden's refusing to lead. He's refusing to acknowledge the state of play in America. America is under siege. The world is under siege. When he pulled out of Afghanistan, it set in motion the rise of terrorism. Putin saw weakness. He went into Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And for three years now, our border policies haven't worked. He chose, President Biden, to reverse every Trump policy. I told him to his face, if you do that, you'll lose control of the border. All of these bad policy choices have bitten President Biden in the ass. Well, well, let me and he ask needs you to this. change. Based on what you just said, do you, why would you support more money for Ukraine if you think that the strategy that's being used is a losing one? Yeah. Um, because I think Americans look at the money going out the door and they look at the concerns at the border that you just sure. talked about. And they say, we've been down this road before in a yeah. bunch of different wars and it hasn't ended yeah. up working out very well for us. So why should we send good money after bad if the strategy is failed? Well, uh, here's the strategy. Everybody in Ukraine's strategy is to fight to the last person. We finally have an ally willing to fight. We haven't lost one American in the fight to liberate Ukraine. We spent about 5% of our defense budget, not lost one troop, and destroyed half of the Russian military. So at the end of the day, we need to help Ukraine get to Crimea and sue for peace on terms favorable to us. To all the people out there talking about Ukraine, can you promise me Putin's going to stop? Can you promise me that China won't invade Taiwan if we show weakness in Ukraine? You can't. So it's absolutely imperative we continue to support Ukraine to make sure the war doesn't get wider. And asking questions about the end game is uh, appropriate. Senator, uh, excuse me, uh, Speaker Johnson deserves answers to his questions. But if you think pulling the plug on Ukraine makes us safer, you've missed a lot of the 20th century. So here's my statement to President Biden. I want to help you on Ukraine because it's in our interest. But I cannot help you help other people until you change your policies that make America so exposed to another attack. President Biden, you're setting the conditions through your border policies to have thousands of Americans killed. 
Well, uh, he has not indicated that he wants to move in the directions that you're talking about, either in being more aggressive in Ukraine right. or more aggressive at the border. So I think this is going to be a very yeah. tough situation to find middle ground on unless uh, unless the president starts to shift a little bit in yeah. terms of his stance on those. So, Senator, we thank you very much for being here and we will watch <laughs> it you. closely. Always good to see you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis you will not get it anywhere else.